What's up, everybody? Welcome to Podcast. Now, I'm Alex. In this video, I want to discuss everything that the new Batman Arkham game needs to learn from Batman Arkham Knight. Now, we made this video talking about what they need to learn from Arkham Origins a few weeks ago. I'm actually recording this video before I have even seen the response to that one. So hopefully you guys liked that one, and hopefully you guys will like this one. I would like to make more videos talking about the strengths and weaknesses of all these other games and really how we can uh, mold the best Batman game. I think you guys tend to really, really like those topics and I really like to record them um, as well so that's what we're going to talk about in this video uh, we're going to have another one Friday and then also next week I believe Tuesday and Thursday are going to be the next Batman videos I don't necessarily have an idea of what I'm going to be doing one of them I'll be talking about the VGAs though so that's one of the next three I'll be talking about speculation the other ones will be talking about um, discussion so okay Arkham Knight. Now, I, sh I guess I should preface this by telling you or, or just saying out loud that I get, obviously, that Warner Bros. Montreal is not rock steady. And I think I've seen there's another person out there that has made a couple Batman videos, and I've really liked the ideas that he that he said. Um, and I do just want to, again, start it out by saying, like, yeah, they're not the same studios. And I think it's a little bit harder to say, well, they have to learn from this and that when they aren't even the ones who made it. Okay, so you can't even say, like, well, they made the mistake the first time and so they have to fix it the second time. Obviously, I think what's most important is they stick to what they can do really well. They know who they are and they know what they can make and they improve upon anybody that's still there that was there for Origins. And to be honest with you, I don't even know how many people, the percentage, let's say, of the people that made Origins, the people that are still in Warner Bros. Montreal, I wonder how many people are still there. I wonder if it's over or under 50%. I bet you it's around 50% um, just in general. Still, the studio themselves obviously have to work to be better than what they did previously. So they have to obviously learn from the mistakes and also improve upon the good things they did in Arkham Origins. But what about Knight? Arkham Knight, super, super divisive game overall, and not for the reasons of like Death Stranding or something. Arkham Knight, you know, it had some really, really good parts to it. It had some really, really weak parts to it. Arkham Knight was obviously uh, taken back or, or like knocked back because of the emphasis on the Joker, the unoriginality of Arkham Knight, stuff like the Batmobile, you know, in terms of like being the Bat Tank, stuff like that. So when it comes to this new Arkham game, Arkham Knight, and I've said it before in past videos, Arkham Knight's the game that people are going to compare it to. And maybe not fairly, and that won't necessarily be all that fair if people do, but people will. Arkham Knight's the last game we got in the Arkham franchise, and if you call yourself Arkham, you're immediately going to get compared to the Ark other Arkham games. So that's just generally what you've signed up for. Now, again, we've talked about some of the stuff in the top five things we want, top five things we don't want. So obviously, I would say the first thing they need to learn, the very, very first thing they need to learn from Arkham Knight is how to manage traversal. Now, the gameplay mechanics of Arkham Knight are phenomenal. The fluidness, if that's even a word, of Batman in that game is the best that we've ever had from any Batman game ever, okay? Gliding, being able, just like flying around the city is truly, truly amazing. I love it. I like that you could chain the, like, the glides and made it like even more where you could like gain a higher like altitude and stuff like that. Really, and you had to kind of like level that up, right? Really, really cool. Uh, so keep that. That's something that I think you 100% need to keep. The flying, getting from place to place as Batman has never really been a problem in these games. And as long as they don't do something stupid, it never truly will also, it will never actually be a problem, right? Uh, okay, but in terms of traversal, not like that. When it comes to the city, I think a lot of people are expecting it to be bigger than Arkham Knight, which I do too. If you're going to have an open world, if you're going to have that city, it needs to be bigger than the city you had in Arkham Knight, or at least kind of more fleshed out. So that's something else you have to learn from it is how do you get from place to place because if you if you really need to get from place to place you're going to need the batmobile and in order to do that that means you have to make the decision on the bat tank even though i really don't i mean i just think that'll be eliminated and all i i think that'd be a, a colossal failure if they ever bring something like that back unless they're just trying to like you know uh, pull a, like a fast one on us or like say like f you like we still are going to do it anyway it would kind of be uh, liberating for them but and again it's not even their design. I think, to be honest with you, I think the Batmobile will feel fundamentally different than what we got 
in Arkham Knight. I also feel that there will be more than one way of traversing, whether it's the motorcycle that he can have or whether it's a bat wing. A lot of people have said bat wing, and a lot of people have also said, well, yeah, like that'd be cool, but like how does that work? And that's tough. So traversal, I can't really get into the, the fundamentals of it, but they need to learn from what they did well and what they did wrong in uh, in Arkham Knight. And again, not what Warner Bros. Uh, Montreal did right or wrong, what Rocksteady did. Again, everything's kind of going to get compared to Arkham Knight I feel, even though you really probably should compare it to Arkham Origins just based off the same thing they did. So traversal, they have to make it more fluid, not just Batman, but also in terms of the vehicles. They have to make it make sense. Another thing they have to learn, is, and this is one of those things that we said have to be and, and can't be or do, we don't want in the game, is the city in terms of a living city. you got to learn from Arkham Knight in a, in a good way from the fact that Arkham Knight didn't do it. Uh, Arkham Knight's another example of a game that didn't have the streets populated, and it's just been constant. Even Arkham Origins, yeah, there was a little bit of activity and stuff, but it's tough, and we've talked about it. It's so, so tough because what do you do if, if it's like a Spider-Man world and there's so many people out in the streets? How does that fundamentally impact the game? I think it massively changes your kind of game. You can't necessarily have the Arkham games that we've had in the past. You kind of need to have, if you have a living city, if there's people on the streets, you need to have a day and night cycle. And I've seen a lot of people, and we've obviously talked about the day and night cycle, where maybe you can play as Bruce Wayne. Maybe there's missions that are available during the day where you play as Bruce Wayne or whatever, and then there's missions at night. Most of the game maybe even would be taking place at night. The streets would be less populated, but they would still be a little populated. There could still be some minor crimes going on, which you could then go and save people. Then you could maybe do something like that. You know, it's not going to be the Spider-Man thing where they take pictures of you and stuff like that, where you can kind of like boost your, your reputation with, with the city folks. It's not going to be like that. But, you know, balancing having people on the streets and not on the streets they need to they need to learn from that, okay? And Arkham Knight didn't learn from what people were saying of the past games. This game needs to learn from Arkham Knight and say, all right, people are fed up with the fact that they keep coming with excuses of uh, emptying the city out. So we need to do something different, and that's something they need to learn. Another thing they need to learn is uh, making an original story. Now, I've talked about this. I don't know how controversial this is. I've said in past videos, for once in my life, and you know, I'm actually on the side of I do sometimes want, for, for the most part, I'm okay with if you just kind of retell something or if you're going off a comic line, if you want to just retell that in a different form, that's totally cool. Tyler and I have said a lot on the channel that it'd be totally cool if they made an Arkham Asylum or Arkham City movie. If the Robert Pattinson uh, new movie, The Batman, was literally just Arkham Asylum as a film, I'd sign, and, and I don't want them to change anything, just make it the film. It would be phenomenal, and I actually sign up for that. However, there's also a line that I draw, and the line is comes with these Arkham games. Um, Arkham Knight was another a video game lie, which we've talked about a lot. The Arkham Knight is not actually Jason Todd. The Arkham Knight is an original character, original story. You're not going to see it coming. Scarecrow's the main villain. He's going to be Joker's not coming back. He's dead. He's gone. He's gone. He's gone. He's gone. All three of those things were lies. Jason Todd was the Arkham Knight. It was just a, a flat-out retelling of a comic line of, like, the Red Hood. Um, Joker, I, in my personal belief, as I've said before, is the main villain, even though, yeah, I mean, it's technically Batman's mind, right? But it's Joker, okay? I mean, Mark Hamill, it's Joker, whatever. You, you know kind of what I mean. But Joker is the main threat, or at least that, that kind of rogue part of Batman's mind or whatever, um, that kind of guilt he feels. That is the villain, not necessarily Scarecrow, who, again, I thought was a great villain but it wasn't really you know he he kind of gets pushed aside okay so fast forward now to arkham whatever this is and even arkham origins have this problem with black mask being joker or stuff like that okay i mean i guess that was a twist i guess we some people may have not seen that coming but court of a uh, court of owls if they're doing the court of owls they can go down a comic strip right now i don't i don't read the comics i don't know these characters probably as well as a lot of you guys do you probably can out knowledge me and that's totally fine i don't think that stops me from talking about it um they could just go in terms of the comics just do a straight off like comic rip off of it and a lot of you guys would probably see it now i actually wouldn't i actually would not see it coming i mean i'm sure from you guys telling me and from me just going on the internet and looking i'd be able to predict the story of this new arkham game and I don't want to do that. So that's my own personal preference of what they need to learn from Arkham Knight is 
you can have characters from the comics. You can have them doing things that you've seen them do or you know them. I'm not saying, like, make a character something that they're not. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying make the Court of Owls something that they aren't. And I know what, in the, in one comic line, like, the Joker eventually takes over as the leader of the Court of uh, Owls. I don't want that. I don't want anything in terms of the fundamental story. I don't want anything that's already been told before. I don't want Jason Todd as the Arkham Knight and they lie to us again. I don't want, I, you know, I want more like Arkham City. Joker died at the end. Who saw that coming? Yeah, he was in danger of dying the whole game. And we were kind of like, well, he could die. But, like, they would never kill the Joker, right? There's no way they'd kill Joker. And then they did. And it was like, oh, my God. And they pulled that the switch with uh, Clayface and all that stuff. And, like, that caught people off guard. That 100% did because people love that ending. So for this game, I think they need to do the same thing. You need to have twists. You need to have powerful story. And, and it needs to be something kind of unexpected while, yeah, staying true to who these characters are. I think that is honestly the biggest thing they need to learn because other than taking the bat, uh, the, the, the bat tank, out okay other than taking that out which is a given and and obviously they're not going to have that in their game i think the number two thing people would say about arkham knight is the story the, the unoriginality of it and the fact that you could see it coming and it didn't really go anywhere i think that's the second thing you'd say about that game in terms of negatives this game cannot do that this game has to be different in turn and then i'll just say one quick thing in terms of what they can learn is in terms of a positive is keep pretty much every gameplay mechanic of arkham knight the game itself, again, I've seen people say like the strengths of each game. The strengths of Arkham Knight is how the game played. Playing as Batman has never felt so good. Using his gadgets, really feeling like you are the Batman. And I mean, every game kind of felt like that. But if you play Arkham Asylum now, it's kind of like, well, you're very, very like tight. You're very like clanky. You don't have as many gadgets. Yeah, you still feel like you're on top of the game, but you're not. You're not really. And I guess the point of every Batman game is to obviously kind of introduce maybe somebody to challenge him, right? That's what the main villains are about. So even side villains even. Uh, but like even the main story villains is to challenge him and, and being like, we can match you, not necessarily in, in one specific aspect but maybe another um however in arkham knight i truly felt like i was on top of it like these thugs oh i'm gonna get them this way i'm gonna get them that way the fighting the the actual fighting mechanics that they've done uh were really really good so you gotta keep that you gotta keep that and you gotta work on everything else Sure, there's probably more things I could talk about the side villains that they have to learn how to do that a little bit better than they did. I liked the wheel. I liked how they handled side villains in Night. I didn't love it, but I liked it. I thought it was a, a very solid step that I think could easily be improved. Obviously, the Nemesis system, like we've talked about in the past from uh, Middle Earth games, uh, making these thugs kind of remember you. Maybe they can rise up the ranks. Sure, there's a lot of other things, but those are just some of the things that I thought of. So let me know in the comments below, guys. What do you think? You know, anything that I just kind of threw out there at at the end as well. What do you think that they need to learn from what Arkham Knight did uh, to make this game the best Arkham game it could possibly be, if not the best Arkham game in general? Let me know. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel podcast now. Hit that bell icon so you guys know when these videos go up. Uh, you guys have always done such a great job of liking, sharing, all that kind of stuff, so make sure you're continuing to do that. We have a new video coming out Friday. And in terms of when I'm recording this, I don't know uh, what it's going to be when the video actually goes up uh, this Wednesday or today as you guys are seeing it. I'll, I'll have already known what Friday's video is, but thank you for your continued support, and I will see you all on Friday.